In this module, we will discuss how to do a deep sedative temporary dental filling. So essentially, let us quickly look at what different filling materials are available generally on an expedition. The most common ones are the pre-mixed filling materials. And these filling materials are generally the zinc oxide based filling materials. The advantages of these filling materials is they are pre-mixed like putty, so they're very easy to use. They can be placed in damp cavities, so the cavities have no need to be tinder dry. When they set, they set slightly softer, so therefore should the need arise that you want to take these filling materials out again after putting it in, it's easier to do that. They are also slightly easier to adjust. And their main ingredients is zinc oxide, zinc sulfate and calcium sulfate. So they're less irritating than many other filling materials. Their, uh, their, their um, negative points are that they, are, they need a mechanically retentive cavity. So they will not stick on a smooth surface. Now the tips for the expedition are <clears throat> in a high altitude environment, when you open the tube or the Tupperware, you'll find that these filling materials feel dry and crumbly. That is because of the weather and the dryness around. All you need to do is to massage them with your fingers and the natural oils or the natural substances will come to the surface and they will again get their original putty-like consistency, making them much easier to use in the mouth. The next group of filling materials are the ones which you actually have to mix. They come in a powder and a liquid, one of which is zinc oxide eugenol, also called IRM. This filling material, the advantage of this filling material is that it contains eugenol. Now, eugenol is a derivative of clove oil. So therefore, this filling material is a sort of a soothing filling material. It is less irritating and it has all the benefits of clove oil as a part of its mixture. Its side um, negative effect is that it still needs a mechanically retentive hole. And of course, it needs to be mixed to be used. It's slightly harder than the pre-mixed filling materials and therefore slightly harder to take out and adjust should the need arise. And the third group of filling materials are the adhesive group of filling materials. These also have to be mixed. They are in a powder and a liquid form. The great superb good point about these filling materials is they stick chemically to the tooth. So they are chemically retentive and can be used as an intraoral bandage when the smooth surfaces of the teeth are chipped or broken. The negative points are they set very, very hard. They're very hard to remove, very hard to adjust. They also have a slightly lower pH. So therefore, they can be quite irritating when they are placed. In a very deep cavity, you would not want to use them because they can irritate the tooth and cause inflammation of the pulp. All these mixed filling materials require quite a dry cavity to actually stick to the tooth. You have to be fairly pedantic about the powder and liquid ratio and that will be in the manual provided with these filling materials. When you mix them, you have to mix them on a glass or plastic. If you that is generally included in the pack which they come, there will be a mixing pad there. However, if you don't find a mixing pad, you can mix it on any glass or plastic surface, but not on paper, because the paper will absorb the liquid and affect their setting, consistency and time. So the expedition tip is that in a cold weather, you have to bring it back to body temperature because otherwise the setting time is, is greatly affected. And it may be a good idea to do a practice mix first. As I said, do not mix it on paper, but mix it on glass or plastic. And the key is that after putting it into the cavity, it's essential that you adjust it before it reaches full set. 
otherwise they are quite hard to adjust once they reach the full hard set. Now, if you don't have filling materials, you can use or adapt to other filling materials which, which you can get hold of. If you don't have your natural, normal dental filling materials, you can use soft wax from the outside of the cheese, duly cleaned and, and, and using a due antiseptic process of cleaning it. You can use Matsya resin, which is from the mastic tree, which is a natural resin. It is available from grocers in Greece and North Africa. You can use soft beeswax or you can use chewing gum. If you use chewing gum, it has a tendency of leaking quite badly. So it's necessary to change it every day. So you take it out, clean that area, put a little bit of toothpaste in and then pop it back in should the need arise. And the first part of doing a dental filling is you got to clean the decay from the filling material. And to clean it, we use this instrument, which is known as an excavator. The excavator has a spoony end on one end and on the other end. So we use this concave surface to clean the tooth. Now this is used as follows. So we place this instrument. Let us hypothetically consider that this tooth has a decay involving the top part of the tooth extending to the front of the tooth. So we place the spoony end of this instrument into that part of the decay, which is the closest to the center of the tooth. The concave side faces forwards because that is where the decay is. And then we clean away from the center of the tooth. So see that that's in the center of the tooth. We are cleaning away, away, away from the center of the tooth. So this is the center of the tooth and we've cleaned away from the center of the tooth. So let us check what happens if we have a decay which is involving the top part of the tooth and extending to the back of the tooth. So we take our spoonie instrument and we place it into that part of the decay closest to the center of the tooth but the concave surface now faces towards the back because that is where the decay is extending to. And again, we clean away from the center of the tooth. We're cleaning away from the center of the tooth. So why do we clean away from the center of the tooth and not towards the center of the tooth? Because when you clean away from the center of the tooth and if your excavator slips, it's still okay if you're cleaning towards the center of the tooth and your excavator slips and goes deep it will go into the pulp chamber of the tooth and cause more damage than good when you clean the tooth you always clean it using small bites you do not take a big bite you always take small bites what's the consistency of the decay the consistency of the decay is like soft philadelphia cheese it can then go to the consistency of <coughs> it can then go to the consistency of wet leather but once it reaches the consistency of wooden shavings you then need to stop you shouldn't get too pedantic about getting all the decay out rather leave some decay in but make sure that you don't go all the way down into the pulp chamber because that will be the worst of both the evils. So let us check how we do it and summarize this with a video. So as you can see, it's been cleaned away from the center of the tooth. The consistency is like soft mushy cheese, soft leather, and it has a variable consistency. We keep cleaning it till it reaches the consistency of wood shavings. And then we stop and put our temporary filling in because we want to make sure that we don't get to fixated on that and manage to enter into the pulp chamber. Next, we have to dry the tooth. How do we dry the tooth? We can use a camera lens dust cleaner, compressed air can, soft tissue, earbuds, because the tooth hole should not be dripping wet. It should be damp or dry for your filling to stick. And you will notice that quite a bit of the gunk or the dirt collects in between these two teeth. So you take your floss, put it between the teeth and get rid of all the dirt which is collected between the teeth. Next, 
if you have a matrix band. So basically what is this is that if a part or a wall of a tooth is broken, we can use this metal ring to surround the tooth to act as your artificial wall against which you pack your filling material. This band also dries and isolates the tooth to a certain extent. But if you don't have this band, you can just push your filling in. That's still fine. If you have this band, because it sort of isolates the tooth, it gives you an artificial wall to pack your filling against. It is worthwhile to use it. Now, how do we use it? This matrix band, it, this is the ring which goes around the teeth. The matrix band holder goes onto the cheek side of the tooth. It, when This is the end of the matrix band, the one in dark blue, and you turn it clockwise to tighten it finger tight or anti-clockwise to loosen it. The tightening ring of the matrix band or the twisty knob of which tightens or loosens it goes in the front part of the mouth. So there's the back part of the mouth, that's the front part of the mouth, that's the cheek side and that's the tongue side. Okay. Now teeth are generally wider at the top and narrower below. So therefore you want your matrix band to be in such a way that when it tightens, it tightens more on the neck of the teeth and less on the top part of the tooth. Essentially tightening like this for the lower teeth and this for the upper teeth. How do we do that? These matrix bands have got these blue sticks. So when you flick this dark blue stick down, this circumference will tighten more than the one above. So this would be very good for the bottom teeth. Now if you're going to do on the top teeth, I would flick this up. So this, see, this is down and now I'm flicking it up. When you flick it up, this circumference will tighten more than that circumference, tightening more around the neck of the teeth. So let us see this in the summary. Finger tighten, screw it down. I see this is downwards. This is tightening more than the top one. So that's for the bottom tooth. For a top tooth, I'll just flick it up. When you flick this upwards and you tighten it, finger tighten, you'll see that this area on the neck is tightening more than the bottom area. So I'm doing the bottom one on the right hand side and I loosen it. I flick the blue lever down. As I flick the blue lever down, it will tighten more on the neck of the tooth. I slide it along the tooth. As I slide it around the tooth, I wiggle it around the tooth to make sure it goes firmly around the tooth. And that is going on the cheek side. This is in the front of the mouth, goes firmly around the tooth. And then I turn it clockwise. As I turn it clockwise, finger tight, it tightens around the tooth, more towards the neck of the tooth and less towards the top part of the tooth, gripping firmly around the teeth, giving me an artificial wall against which I can put my filling material. Now we know it is a deep filling material and we are going to put a mild antiseptic steroid cream in the bottom part of the hole. So we can take this applicator tips. These are these tips on a small plastic stick and a little cotton at the end. If you don't have that, you just use a normal cotton pellet or a swab. This is the mild antiseptic steroid cream. It contains demiclocycline as your antiseptic and triaminsinolone acetonide as your steroid. And this is very good for cooling down an angry, painful tooth because it gives local antiseptic and local anti-inflammatory action. If you do not have that, instead you can use a damp piece, a small damp piece, not dripping wet, damp piece of clove oil, which can also help to a certain extent. So now we've taken our leather mix, we popped our leather mix into the depths of the hole of the tooth, like so. This is the yellow bit, so we put a little bit in right at the bottom. You do not need a lot. You just need a little bit, which goes into the depth of the hole of the cavity, okay? Next, we have to pack it with our temporary filling material, which is the pre-mixed temporary filling material known as cavit. Now, instrument which we use to carry the filling material from where it is present to the tooth which might be located in a fiddly location is known as a flat plastic. So we take a flat plastic, we scoop a bit of our temporary filling material like so and pop it into the hole. Once we pop it into the hole, we then use a finger or a damp cotton bud to pack it in and flush it to the sides of the tooth. Underfilling is always better than overfilling 
because there will be less need of adjusting the filling in that case. So as I said, underfilling is better than overfilling of the tooth. So now that you packed your temporary filling material in, we take out our matrix band if you have used it and let us summarize it. So we're taking a flat plastic, we're scooping it in, scooping our cavit or temporary filling material out from the container and we are massaging it with our fingers to make sure it is in a putty-like consistency. We are popping it into the tooth and then we are using a wet cotton to flush it to the sides of the tooth. If you haven't used a matrix band, the patient can bite on it so it firmly impregnates into the cavity of the tooth. Now, what if you're given your local anesthesia and the patient is very numb and you ask the patient, how does the filling feel? And the patient says the filling feels perfectly. The patient goes to the tent, has a lie down, wakes up, bites on the filling and suddenly feels that the filling is really high, is very uncomfortable and causing him pain. And then to adjust the filling will be a lot of hard work. The best time to adjust the filling is when it's not got its full set. So how do we do that? We take any sort of a marking paper, which is charcoal paper, carbon paper, typing paper, and we tell the patient to bite on it. As the patient bites on it, anything higher than the level of the tooth will be marked by a prominent blue dot, like so. So anything higher than the level of the tooth. So then we take a flat plastic, which is this instrument is called, which is not a flat metal instrument, and we shave off this prominent blue dot or black dot and we keep doing that. We again tell the patient to bark, bite on a marking paper, again see if there's a prominent dot and we again shave it out. We keep repeating this process till it does not exist and it looks something like that in the patient's mouth. So this is what we achieved. This is your nerve or pulp chamber, this is your mild antiseptic steroid cream and that is your temporary filling material. This filling takes 20 to 30 minutes to set and the patient can eat after two to three hours. There's another filling material also, which I described, which is the adhesive filling material, which is slightly acidic. Good point, it can be stick like super glue onto the tooth. It is available in a powder and liquid variety. So you take two scoops of powder, two drops of liquid, one minute to mix it with in a chewing gum or a putty-like consistency and you have one minute to use it. Now the tip for expeditions is it's always a good idea to read your instructions because quite a few of these kits are there where this bottle is actually empty. It is a measuring bottle for which you use normal water and you'd mix the consistency or measurements as given in the pamphlet in the kit. However, in some um, uh, types of glass ionomers, you will get a liquid in this bottle. So it all depends on whether the acid has been mixed in with the powder or there is a liquid acid for you to mix the powder with. This will be clearly present in the instructions. So when you read the instructions and you find this bottle is empty, it's not because it's leaked, because it is a measuring bottle for which you will use normal water for. Right, so now if this tooth is chipped or broken or flaked, we can use glass ionoma to pop it across. It will stick chemically to the smooth surface of the tooth and act as an excellent intraoral bandage. Another tip for expeditions is that you must clean the instruments immediately after doing this filling. Otherwise the filling material will stick to your instruments and be really hard to clean after that. What happens when you don't have your necessary dental kit? If you don't have an excavator, you can use either the sharpish end of a ballpoint refill, not the metal end, at the plastic end, the end of a matchstick, just to get rid of all the debris which is there in the hole. If you don't have cotton, you can use tampons to dry and isolate the tooth so it's not wet to do an easy filling. If you don't have a matrix band, you can just push your filling material in. It'll be like a dumbbell filling. This will be the thin part of the filling. That will be the wider parts of the filling. It will still block any food getting there and prevent the situation from getting worse. If you don't have floss, you can use a normal thread. You can clean a piece of thorn. Use that to clean that area up. 
This is very important if a patient breaks a filling which is there in between the teeth and you do not have any means to do a temporary filling. All you have to do is to keep telling the patient to floss regularly. What will happen is that the food will get impacted in that space between the two teeth and that will cause swelling of the gums and further sensitivity. So they have to keep it regularly clean. If you cannot do a filling in that area, that's the least what he can do to prevent the situation from getting worse. If you don't have a spatula and a pad to mix your powder and liquid, you can use any metal instrument <clears throat> on a plastic sheet or a glass sheet to mix it with. If you do not have a flat plastic to carry your temporary filling material to the fiddly hole to do the filling, you can use just a back part of the finger or a bent end of a spoon. What can be the possible post filling complications? Now this is something which we all worry about that you've done a filling and suddenly the patient develops an abscess. So there is a possibility of that occurring and let us discuss what we can do to reduce that from happening and thus let us summarize what we have just learned. So we know that there is a pre-mixed filling materials which are soft and easy to take out. They are the sticky ones that chemically stick to the teeth, which is your glass inoma ones. Some kits do have leather mix, which is the mild antiseptic steroid paste. Quite often we do carry clove oil, which has incredible uses of its own. Some cements do have clove oil mixed into it and they are quite soothing in nature, but can set quite hard. This is another type of very adhesive filling material, which is present on quite a few of the American oil rigs. <clears throat> So therefore, if a patient comes to you complaining of slight sensitivity and you see some blackish areas on his teeth, that essentially he's got a hole in the enamel on the outer surface of the tooth. You can use any filling material you want and the dentist will do a proper filling. However, if a patient comes with an increasing sensitivity and you find a bigger hole on the tooth surface and then that hole has gone to the second layer of the tooth, which is known as the dentine and again, you can use any filling material and the dentist will just do a deeper filling on that tooth. However, if a patient complains of a prolonged sensitivity after cold and hot, so he's eaten something cold and hot and the sensitivity still remains after he's eaten something cold and hot. So in this case, the cavity has gone through the dentine and come very, very close to the pulp and this, the pulp is possibly a bit irritated, but it is of a reversible irritation or reversible inflammation. So in this case, we need a sort of a soothing filling material on the tooth. So therefore, we will take either this, the zinc oxide pre-mixed filling materials, which are rather soothing, or the one which we have to mix, which contains eugenol, which is your derivative of clove oil, which is also slightly soothing. We will avoid the more irritating, acidic, very hard filling materials like these. In these cases, we would add a little bit of leather mix and drop it right in the bottom part of the hole to do this filling. Similarly, what we had described in our hands-on module till now, how to do a deep filling, the description which we've got through. That is what we would do for this particular patient. The patient will go to the dentist and will have a deep filling done. What if there's a patient who contains of a constant throbbing ache and sensitivity in connection with the tooth? In this situation, there is an irreversible inflammation of the pulp. So the pulp is not dead. It's part living, part dying, part angry, part inflamed. So these are the patients where you have to be a bit more careful. In this case, what we would do is if you have leather mix, we would put it on a little bit of cotton, put it into the depths of the hole and then do a filling on top, ideally with something soft, which we can take out easily should the situation arise. If you don't have that, then you would go for the IRM based ones, but you definitely avoid the very hard adhesive ones in this situation. Why? Because these are the patients which are predisposed to blow up into an abscess after you have done the filling. In which case, if the situation is worse after you have done the filling, you want to quickly take the filling material out. 
having cotton inside when you placed your leather mix or dampened it with clove oil if there is no leather mix and then done a soft filling on top it will be quite easy to take the filling material out should the need arise if you don't have that and if you use the IRM again the cotton in it will decrease the strength of the filling again making it easier for you to take the filling material out and that is why we do not want to use the hard adhesive filling materials when he goes to the dentist, the dentist will probably do a root canal treatment or extraction. He might ask, why don't you do an extraction instead of attempting these methods to control his pain is because possibly you won't have the skills, instruments or the environment to do an extraction. You might definitely need to think of antibiotics for this patient to help in getting the edge of his pain away. Again, it is a stepladder means to control his pain because you cannot medivac or dentivac this patient and you need all the means possible to control his pain. What if the patient has a diffused facial spe swelling or a pain and a pain on biting? That means the inflammation, you can see the infection has gone all the way down into the bone and when he bites on it, it stimulates the nerves around in the bone causing a diffused facial pain. So he's developing a dental abscess in this area. You do not want to cover this area with a filling. You want to make sure it's open. You do not want to block the drainage of the acids and gases leaking out from this dead pulp. So you do not want to do a filling for this particular tooth. So you have to keep, a, keep that area clean, no filling, just keep it clean. It is complicating because these three have overlapping signs and symptoms. The reason is that a tooth is multi-rooted. So you could have one area of the tooth which is inflamed, irritated but alive, another area which is dead or dying, leaking acids and gases. Therefore, you could have multiple symptoms going around at the same time and that is why you want to keep it safe. You want to use something which you can take out in case the situation worsens. <clears throat> you might want to use antibiotics, you want to use something locally which will decrease the pain, <coughs> kill the infection, ideally leather mix which is expensive and if you don't have leather mix, a small cotton swab which is damped in clove oil. <coughs> you want to make sure your filling is easy to remove, hence you'll place a little bit of cotton in the filling so you can take it out easily and therefore you do not want to use a mixed hard adhesive filling materials for these patients. What's another differential diagnosis is to be clear about is to differentiate <coughs> between maxillary sinusitis and upper dental abscess. So if a patient complains of maxillary sinusitis, you must make sure that you check inside the patient's mouth because if you don't check inside the patient's mouth and you advise steam inhalations for this patient, the patient will blow up into an abscess. So that is why it is essential to check into his mouth and to make sure that there is no dental factor causing him to get the signs and symptoms of sinusitis. So in our next uh, module, we will discuss avulsed teeth and fractured front teeth. Thanks a lot.